So hello there, my name's uh, uh, Sherry Forsyth and I'm a peak performance coach. Uh, and one of my areas of speciality is to do mental training of elite athletes. And so I'm joined today by Sheree Redeker, uh, who lives and trains in Germany. Welcome, uh, Sheree. Hi, Sherry. Good to be chatting with you. Okay, so uh, there are a few questions that we're going to be speaking about. So Sheree can then explain to you out there what the mental training um, has done in her uh, comp competition uh, and, in, and in her life. So let's start. Sheree, I'd like you just to introduce yourself to um, the listeners out there. And um, so what is your sport and how long have you been, invo been involved in it? I race in mountain biking in the discipline cross country. Um, it's an hour and a half racing generally. And um, the elite girls start together, the elite guys start together and then under 23 and junior. So you have your category. I've been racing, well, been cycling for about 14 years, but in the discipline of cross country, I've been about nine years and six of those have been on an international level. Okay. Um, and so talking about the level, what, what kind of, what's the best level you have achieved in regards to your cycling? With the best level achieved is probably racing at Commonwealth Games in um, Australia and also at World Cups and World Championships. Those have been really good. Um, so far to date, my best results has been 24 on a World Cup circuit. Um, and yeah, there's also been local races, the South African and African Championships. I've managed to get that title as well as um, second and third. Okay, brilliant. So you are a full-time athlete? Yes. Have you, you have another job? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, don't have, don't have another job, but yeah, unfortunately, like, um, I don't have a salary from the racing, the financial side is a difficult side in the racing. Um, but yeah, I've got goals and ambitions and um, been lucky with that I have got to be able to try to reach them. Okay, so um, that's fantastic. So basically you live, eat and dream being on a cycle, uh, which is, which is that, that is the, the level that we're wanting to uh, be speaking to, to people who have that amount of commitment. Um, so I, I'd like to kick off our questions today, now that you've introduced yourself, uh, Cherie, on um, how you feel now, very currently, that the Olympics have been put on hold. What is it going to, how are you going to change uh, physically and mentally? How are you feeling about it? Just, yeah, burble away. Well, with the change coming, I kind of feel at peace about it. Um, I think two years ago, the mental state I was in, I don't think I would have felt at the same place because I was very close to stopping the sport and I was in a very negative cycle. Um, but now I think working with you, I've really helped to come realize that like it's a goal. And it's an important goal that I want to achieve, but we've worked hard at it, that we've made it so it doesn't define who I am. Um, and I think that's like given me the peace about it because yes, it's a big goal and there's various um, milestones that we need to use to reach it. So now I've just got to add a bit more for the extra year. Um, this time, like, Yes, it, financially it's going to be interesting because I have to add another year to try qualify and try focus on it. But on the positive side, it gives me more time to work on those weaknesses. And I feel like this year things are really coming together, especially mentally, and I'm able to work through those negative thoughts and really believe in myself more. And this extra year has kind of given me that um, opportunity to just continue to keep the belief there and keep working at it. And yeah, the goal is still there, it's just the time to it now has moved. Okay, so um, if you were going to be competing in June, 
would you have felt that you really were completely ready for it and giving your best? Or are you relieved is maybe the wrong word. You mentioned that you were at peace, but are you looking very positively about the fact that now you've got an extra year to prepare for that huge goal? Yeah, I think it's kind of given me the feeling that the beginning of this year, I really started to feel like all our lessons are starting to come pay off. Like I'm really grateful that you've given me the patience and the space to overcome those areas where I was battling with on my own. You've like, I've been able to grow within myself that I've been able to understand exactly what it means to be resilient, to focus on that determination, to believe in myself and this time has helped. And if it was sooner, I think I, I might have been a bit more stressed about it because I feel like, oh, now it's coming together and now it's too late. Ah. So it's, yeah, it, it's kind of things happen for a reason and timing. We don't always understand about a situation like it's very, very sad and about this whole global virus and how it's affected a lot of people. Um, when we look back onto it, maybe we will be able to understand a bit more of everything and why it's happened. Um, and it's kind of like we will always have like blocks and difficulties come our way with the path and the goals we need to go. It's how we deal with it that makes a difference. Um, so, Basically, uh, the mental training and the preparations that I've had this year have really helped give me that sense of peace to go forward and be like, okay, I've got another year. Let me sit down. Once everything settled a bit, start planning, see what I can do and find the routine and rhythm and work with you, with John and um, Michelle to just get that focus going and yeah, see what I can do so I don't have any regrets. Okay, so uh, the conditions of lockdown are different in different countries. Um, in our country, as of midnight last, last night, as, as you know, we are on total lockdown, which means we are not allowed to go outside, to walk our dogs, do some running, doing our cycling. It's prohibited. We've got to stay within our homes. Um, is it the same in Germany? Um, well, we still have the lockdown. We're not allowed to have gatherings. Um, we, we have a special circumstance where we're allowed outside. Like we can still actually go run, walk dogs. I can cycle as long as I do it solo or with person, like with Heiko who I'm living with um, and keep a good social like distance when I'm out, when you pass people out there. And I think we, it's, yeah, I think everyone's got a difficult situation to handle. Um, and like in Spain and France and Italy, they also have the lockdown. So it'll be interesting to see from South Africa's side how people manage with the lockdown. Um, I'm just grateful that the German um, government still allows us to be outside. And yeah, so that really helps with my training. I've just had to now, with gyms being closed, I've had to bring gym home and find solutions there. But it's, it's been fun. Like Heiko has kept it entertaining as well. And we've got a good routine going. Okay, so for just um, if you were uh, an athlete where you weren't allowed to go cycling outside, do you think, and this is just a, a word for the athletes that are in that situation, do you think that they, could, they would still be able to find a way to train as properly as they can without actually being allowed to go outside? I think it also it depends on your situation, what you have. Um, these days, technology has been amazing and you've got indoor trainers and smart trainers, so you're able to go onto Zwift or TACX program and be able to do your training on an, in, on an indoor trainer, sorry. And um, so that's good. And there's also rollers. And um, so those will help the athletes who have those tools to still actually do training per 
normal and they stick to their routine. But for the athletes who don't have those, like the rollers or indoor trainer, they need to just focus on trying to find other creative ways and maybe build more strength training and see what drills they can do with the, the situation and the environment they have. Okay. Um, so yeah, it is the, it's easy to say like, oh, it's locked down, I've got an indoor trainer. But for the people who don't have indoor trainers, they just maybe need to be a bit more creative and see what they can do and reach out to the community and maybe ask and say, listen, I'm in this situation, I really need to train. Is there anybody who can help me? Like the mountain bike in the community is really big and really helpful. So I'm sure there'll be somebody who'll be able to help out when you want to still keep focused to reach the goal. Okay, so thank you. So for those athletes who might be listening uh, to this uh, broadcast, uh, reach out to other people. Let's, let's be generous in our heart and our spirits and our minds during this time of lockdown uh, and, and be able to help as many people as we can. So, all right. So, um, Shuri, I want you to talk a little bit about what you really love about your sport, why it's kept you so committed and motivated. Yeah, there's, a, there's quite a few things um, about mountain biking that I've loved. I think I've been doing it you know, since I was little. Like we sold, my sister and I sold some sheep and we bought our first bicycle. Um, the, the bicycle for me is like kind of a tool to just escape and to see places and meet people. And it just gives me that sense of freedom. Um, and the racing side of it kind of gives me a sense of purpose to work towards and I'm able to just learn to push past my limits and work physically and mentally and on my nutrition and just see how how far I can go um, and it's yeah it's there's like so many things you can think about and like to try to say like how but I think almost like once a bite, once you get the bite of cycling and the feeling, it's like that freedom and the, the wind through your hair and yeah, just the places and the people you meet. It's such an amazing community. There's always people who will help out. And yeah, I've, I've just really enjoyed the bicycle where I can. Okay. And so, um, as with life and with all our sports, there are going to be certain challenges that, that we face. What are your major challenges that you face now um, with regards to your cycling? Um, one of the biggest challenges for me is actually being mentally. Like, I know I physically can be up there with the girls, but I think mentally I haven't believed in myself enough. And... I've let so many negative thoughts actually get to me that it actually influences my racing. Mm. So instead of that out, not worrying what other people think, um, I think that's kind of learning to control that is actually helped towards my racing. Um, so the mental side has been really big. Uh, another big side that's been a bit of a challenge is the financial side. Um, to get to races, it's not always easy. Um, I'm very grateful for my team, for the equipment and the support they give at the races. Um, but yeah, there's still the financial side of getting their accommodation and um, still living life and to make it sustainable. So that's a challenge there, which also brings a challenge with Olympics being postponed another year. I still need to see how I can actually finance Fun that so <laughs> I still need to see how I can finance that year to see if I can actually keep pursuing that goal. So it's kind of like there's situations that you need to see that I can control and ones that I can't, um, and see if how I can balance those challenges and where I need to reach out to try overcome the challenges. Um, so yeah, basically mentally and financially has been my two biggest challenges out there. And so on, and the, on the financial, sorry, on the financial, <laughs> do Cycling South Africa sponsor or give you money in any way at all? Or is, are you completely on your own? 
Well, they've been really like helpful with the World, the SA Cup series. They've made sure where they can to make those races highest category possible or even the one below so that we can gain points to have a better world ranking on the start list. And last year they had an implementation where they were able to give us like an incentive that when we do well at a race in a certain position, they were able to help fund towards that. Um, but yeah, with the financial times at the moment, everyone's got their own challenges and yeah, they've able to help where they can and yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the, the next thing I want to ask you is, um, the, the, we've worked on lots of things to, to make sure that you believe in yourself and, and, um, and, and your abilities. Has that mental training, which obviously has affected your, the, the competitive side of you really well, can you, have you noticed a difference in how you approach your practices as well, your training? Yeah, I find it, it's actually really helped that I'm able to just be able to focus on the racing side and mentally, but especially when I use those scenarios in the racing to also apply that in training. Um, a perfect example I had was a race that I did, a World Cup that I did in Italy, in Valdisol. And I remember leading up to the event, I was really focusing hard on the, the mental side, visualizing the race. When I did the interval, I visualized myself being on the track, being where I need to be. And that visualization really helped going into the race. And I was really nervous. I remember being at the start and a friend of mine said to me, he's like, breathe, relax, like you've got this. And I actually, like, I stood at the start line. I'm like, I do have this. Like I've been visualizing it and practicing it and thinking of the scenarios that can happen. And I've put the training in. Now I need to trust that process and go into the race. And it's the best race I've ever had. I completely blocked out everything and I was able to find my flow and just get into that rhythm and not worry about what other people think or worry about the result. Like I had that goal in the training and I was able to implement it into the race. And yeah, that was the race where I had my best result to date so far. And to find those feelings again, sometimes it's not always easy. And it's something that I constantly have to work at. Um, so it's, it's basically, I can't just expect to be on the start line and think, oh, this is what we've spoken about. This is how we're going to do it. But using it in training and practicing it in the scenario where I can have more control over, it really helps translate into the racing. Okay, so um what i'd like to ask is if you had to describe how you were prior to starting to work on the mental part of your of your of your sport just a few adjectives of how you were before and how you are now would you be able to do that i think yeah there's a few few scenarios of beforehand where i was a lot more anxious um, I didn't have the belief and I, I worried too much of what others would think of the results. Um, and I, I, I was probably more scattered and unsure. And now that I've had the training and had the help and guidance, um, it's kind of bring myself more to ground and have that foundation so that when something does come up that I, that's out of my control, I'm able to be more at peace about it and just, just con like focus and tackle it, being more confident and knowing that, okay, this is something that's gone wrong, but I'm able to go into it with being like, okay, well, how am I going to handle it? And is it something I need to focus on now or can I just forget about it and just be in now racing where I need to be. Um, so it's, I find that it's a very essential part of training um, when I look at where I was and where I'm at now. And when we started, like, I think I had 
it was excitement, everything was building, it was great, and then moved to Europe, and I kind of, I think, put myself back in that hole again, and I just didn't open up, I don't think I, I spoke to many people, I didn't schedule any um, appointments, and I kind of got myself too negative, and I, I got myself back into that negative cycle, and when you reached out to me again, I realized I'm like, oh, why didn't I just speak to you from the beginning? Because it, it brought back to light of what I needed to speak about and not having those things just locked up inside myself, like being able to speak to you and have that platform is just opened up so many more opportunities and made me realize that I need to tackle these situations. Like it, it's hard, but it and it takes time. And now the beginning of this year, I've really started to feel like things clicking together, which is really awesome. Um, and I'm hoping like when we do start the season to see those fruits come into um, like bear the fruits of what we've been practicing. Um, and yeah, so it's kind of, I'm going on a bit of a tangent now, but one of the things that I've also realized with the, mental coaching is that to not let the results define me and to be able to be like, okay, this is my goal. This is where I want to go, but to focus on the process and not try to perfect everything um, and just believe in myself, knowing that I've given what I can and not to go out and just put those actions into, put those words and thoughts into actions. So do you think um, if you are very strong mentally, um, that it's kind of a secret weapon in your, in your competitive life? I think it could be, you could say it is, it's like a secret weapon because a lot of like us out there on the international level, even at national level, we're all working hard, we're all training hard. But to have that mental edge is something that really like helps that puzzle piece. It like just puts that finishing touch to it. And um, yeah, it's whether you're a guy or whether you're a girl, like it's really, really important. Like, yeah, I think as, as girls are more, um, and we probably more willing to actually have mental coaching, but for guys as well, you need to realize like, it's okay to be like, I've got a mental coach or I am like, I have somebody guiding me to just be the best I can be. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that pans uh, out. See how that pans out. Yeah. I think also, um, uh, very often if you play a, a team sport, you, you one is catered for, um, because there's generally more money and, so there are, you know, sports psychologists and, and mental training that, that come to the full-on team. Uh, I think that the people who don't um, have access to the mental training uh, coaches are those that eat individually in, in their, own, uh, their own sport where there's generally not a lot of money. So, um, and also a lot of people don't know about it. So they don't realize what it can do. So I think that the, you know, in a team environment, you all, you know, build each other up anyway. But when you are in an individual sport on your own, um, maybe it's even more important to have that mental side because it is going to be more challenging. You can't be carried by other people. When you are on that bike and in that race, it is just you. And, um, yeah, so that's really what I'm targeting is a lot of the, the more individual athletes. I'm not saying that I, I don't do team, but the, the need is greater with the, with the individual athletes. Yeah, I think that, that's also, that is definitely a good point to bring out is that even like cycling, like yes, it's an individual sport, but to have that, to create that team around you in the sense of, family, mental coaching, trainer, um, your training coach, even if you can where possible, like a nutritionist as well to just help guide um, and friends as well, like your training buddies and um, friends who just not even in cycling, 
it's good to have that balance and create your little circle to help you keep focused and um, to keep going at what you love doing. I think what you're saying there is really important to uh, be able to surround yourself with your team, uh, people yeah. who believe 100% in you, in what you are doing. Um, you trust them. Uh, like uh, if you have a dietitian or a nutritionist, you know that they are working specifically to make sure that you will be the very best you can be. And so it's important to pick those people carefully and surround yourself with people that will, will help you and enhance your belief in yourself. Um, yeah, no, that, that's definitely true. Like believe in the process. Like if you find yourself starting to question the people a lot that's in your circle, like you need to first see if it's coming more from yourself that you're not like trusting everyone, like you don't trust yourself, so you're not trusting others, or is it something that you need to relook at and be like, okay, there's something that they did, maybe I should find a different circle to just help me boost that motivation. So yeah, find that group that it's it, it's really helpful. Like I can ex talk from experience, um, just with the support structure I've had and having those my little community, believe in me, has like really helped with my racing and I can go out there and not have those wor thoughts worrying like think, oh, what if I don't do well at this race? What if I don't meet this qualification? Like I'm able to put those thoughts aside because whether I win or lose, like my little community is still going to love me for who I am. So that's, that's really, really great. Important. Yeah. To not, to not link your self-worth with your results. Um, yeah. A lot of people do. And then they are purely how they are is dependent on how they did in the race. And that, yeah. that is a very flimsy way to build who you are. Um, yeah. So, so um, Cherie, um, the skills that you've learned through the mental training, has that helped in just the way you're living your life as well? And if so, can you maybe give us an example or two? It, it definitely has, like, being able to just move over into life scenarios. Um, it's helped me be more structured and have more of a routine. And an example actually is with this uh, current one now is with the interview. Like, I was, well, I am still nervous. And uh, it was it is, like, a nervous thing for me because I'm not – I don't feel confident actually speaking about things and finding the right words to speak about it. And I was like, no, I need to make sure I perfect this and get it right because I want to get the right message out there. I want to have it rightly worded. And then I kind of realized, I'm like, wait a minute, like this is how I do in the racing. Like the racing, I like, I train hard. I get out there. I want to make sure everything's perfect and I'm on the, the, the point and my power's good. And, and then I've realized, I'm like, wait, like, they I'm stressing about trying to get everything perfect where I just need to focus on the process and focus on those areas where we've learned about like resilience and being in the now and just controlling those emotions. And it's the same with the interview. Like I just need to just talk and what I need to and share with what I have. And it might not be perfect, but it's, it's not about the perfectness. It's just about sharing the message and having that confidence and just believing in myself more that, yes, it's an area that I need to work at and you can always improve. So the mental side's kind of given me that little bit of confidence going into the interview saying, okay, yes, I'm as nervous as anything, but I'm going to do this to the best of my ability. Yeah, and you are doing it very well. <laughs> you are telling the people exactly. Uh, yeah. So fantastic. And another example could also be like, I think from the photography perspective, um, because when I, well, when I wasn't cycling full time, I was doing photography as a profession. And photography is kind of a work where you need that appraisal. Um, sorry, that approval from people if they like your work and if your clients are happy and that kind of brings you in more work and more um, uh, clients and 
jobs and stuff. So it was kind of, it's kind of made me realize like I need to be confident in what I do, whether the client likes it or not. I need to believe in myself mm. um, and not let that, the prey, that like approval define who I am. So like the racing sides, like I've realized I mustn't worry about what other people think. And the photography side, I mustn't worry about what other people think because I just need to work on what I do best and everything else will fall into place. Absolutely. Um, so I apologize to the listeners. There might be a little bit of a, a problem with our sound, um, but uh, please bear with us because I'm sure that you'll be able to get the gist of what we're saying anyway. Um, so Cherie, well, what would you advise youngsters who are starting out to become more professional? I mean, not just the you know weekend cyclists, but for youngsters who are really have a goal to do well, what what bit of advice would you give them? Well, there's could almost be a whole book about <laughs> about it. Um, I, I think one big thing: it is going to be hard and it is going to be challenging. But you need to be aware of that and embrace that challenge and know that you can always actually improve on what you set out. So never like settle for just being like, okay, I did this well this race. Like always look further on. Um, and I think the biggest thing that can help with that is to believe in yourself and trust the process. Um, because yeah, we could, if you don't believe in yourself, like, would anybody else believe in you? So to really focus on that and work on that. And for, for youngsters who are getting out there and who need, who think they need all the equipment, who need the top lightest bike or whatever, if you don't have that, don't stress. Like, work on what you can and what you can control, and then those things will come. Like it will take time, but it's you've just got to learn to work with what you have and be able to just embrace it and be grateful um, and just get out there and just have fun as well. Like it's hard because we put so you put so much in and you invest so much into it, but if you lose that fun, it's kind of what's what's the point of it? Yeah. Like. If you start comparing yourself too much to others and stressing about like, oh, but I don't have this, I don't have that, and they have this, and that's why they did well. Like, it doesn't become something that you started. Like, you need to actually go back and like, why did I start? So out of that, like, the main thing is to believe in yourself, not compare yourself to others. Um, and if you do put it in a positive, structured way and just work with what you have, and trust in the process. So that um, uh, if you are comparing yourself, putting it into a positive way, what you're talking about there is maybe not reinventing the wheel and learning from them as opposed yes. to comparing and, and finding yourself lacking. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Because with the social media world these days, I think, like I do catch myself as well still going into it and be like, oh, but they training here, like I'm stuck in Europe training and all the Europeans have gone to South Africa for the summer to train. And I look at it, and I'm like, well, okay, I don't have that opportunity. Luckily, I've got an awesome group of friends who are just as crazy and who don't mind training in the cold at times. Yeah. Um, and I do have a trainer when it gets too much. Um, so yeah, like kind of looking at it, be like, okay, well, this is my environment. This is how I'm going to train and just use that to the best of my ability. Mm, perfect. Uh, so our last question, um, is there anything else you would like to add um, at all? Mm, I think we've pretty much covered a lot of the scenarios um, and been able to just, yeah, share what I can. And like, I'll, like I'm always available to chat to if somebody wants to send me a message and feel that I didn't make sense to something or if they want to be like, you said this, like, and they went, and I didn't quite get it. Can you explain more? Like, I'm more than happy to answer. Anything. And how, sh how uh, should they contact you, Cherie? Is there an email? Um, or? 
Well, I think the best is just on like social media, on the messages that you can get there. Um, and then from there, like we could maybe go into email for a better contact. Um, and then, yeah, as well, like I would, to me, would advise to people where they can with the costs, if they can, to find a mental coach and find their, well, buddy for me, because it's, for me, training with you has has really helped me and like really made me believe in myself and not be overwhelmed about the goals and to create those milestones and find that process. Um, it's really just helped me be a stronger person. And um, yeah, I'm really grateful for it. So I recommend it to people if they want to even if they're not cycling and they just doing work or have a challenge that they need to overcome, I think it's really good to find that somebody to help talk to and not just keep things bub bubbled up. That's, that's, uh, that's exactly it, uh, Cherie. And uh, so I, I thank you uh, for taking time on your very busy training schedule, uh, for giving us the time today. And if you can't make contact with Cherie for whatever uh, reason, so it's Cherie Redica, uh, please feel free to uh, contact her through me. Um, also, I'll on my Facebook page, uh, Cherie Forsyth Coaching, or you can drop me an email on sherryforsyth at gmail.com. That's C H E R R I F O R S Y T H. Um, and yeah, and let's, let's see what we can. Uh, achieve. Let's see how we can spread the word. But thanks again, Cherie, very much for your time. Thank you. Bye. Have a lovely day.